what questions do we refuse to answer? Well, again, I think we have to refer to session two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar to the people we don't answer, isn't it? Really? So, yeah. well, in particular, again, if we focus on the first three or four things, um, my first feelings are we love answering questions about love. Yeah. We love answering questions about truth. Yeah. We love answering questions that involve personal truth. Yeah. And we love answering questions uh, that involve a person being you know, humble or learning how to be humble and so forth. So all of those kind of questions, they're probably going to get answered. Although remember that if, if it's answered by an email, probably not because yeah. we don't have the time to answer people by email yeah. and particularly to give the concise answers that we would normally give via email is very, very difficult. So it's much better if we have a conversation about their question yeah. than it is to answer it about email. But but those four sets of questions are probably some of the most important questions for us. Yeah, answer. that's right. And, and those kinds of questions we routinely um, send off to our Frequently Asked Questions account of so course. that they can be added to a list and we do a video to yes. answer those questions. Yes, so we may not answer the question directly via email if a person sent in an FAQ, but we probably will put those questions on a list somewhere to answer in the future. Yeah. And, and as you know, um, we often only get to do three or four or five questions an hour. So, you know, and we have a limited amount of time recording around six to 12 hours a week. So, you know, if there's three or 400 questions as a backlog, then of course it's going to take some time probably before we get around to it. And that yeah. depends again on our priorities. Like if we feel the question has a much higher priority, it will help more people then that question or a session containing that question will probably be created mm. before a question that we feel was going to help a smaller amount of people will be created. That's right. And mm. the way we structure the sessions where we answer questions is that we try to go for, to present the broadest principles that govern um, and can help people reason yes. uh, and explore the answers to smaller, more specific questions. Correct. So, so we sort of start big yeah, and hone, hone into in. small <laughs> questions. So we start with every subject. We try to start with the overall encompassing principles and guidelines and the different principles of love involved and principles of truth involved before we start honing down and giving a specific answer to a specific question on a specific topic <laughs> you know, yeah. that's involved in that large subject area. Yeah. yeah, and that's very loving. It helps people get a broad understanding of everything that we reference then in yeah. the small answers. Yeah. So that's the questions we do answer. Yeah, Let's yeah, get back yeah. to the ones that we yeah. don't. Um, so opposite to what you said, questions that show people don't want to love, that um, they have no interest in loving, um, that allow no opportunity or possibility to teach the person who's asking the question about love. Mm. Those kind of questions we just don't answer. No, we, we, won't, we won't even get around to it. <laughs> it's just never going to happen because we feel for a number of reasons that like if a person's not open to love before they ask a question, then it's highly unlikely they're going to hear an answer that's based on love. And if a person's not open to truth uh, with regard to hearing the answer to a question, then what's the point of telling them yeah. any truth? Yeah. And if a person's in, 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 unable to be humble during the asking of a question even, then I'm pretty sure that they're going to be unable to be humble receiving the answer. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty hard for us to answer questions in that, that fall into those categories. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, so questions that demonstrate a refusal of universal truth yes. or demonstrate a lack of interest in discovering universal truth yes. that allow no opportunity or possibility to teach that universal person or truth. other person about other people about universal truth. They just won't get answered. answered. And the same applies to love. You know, questions that are not about, you know, God's love, about loving your neighbour, yeah. uh, you know, if they're just all like... We get a lot of metaphysical questions, yeah. questions that we have a very low priority to answer. Yeah. You know, sure, they're interesting and it's a bit, it's a bit like, you know, you know, why does a tree uh, suck water up from the base to the top, you know, yeah. and how does it do it? You know, well, it might be a fascinating physical question. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not our primary motivation for answering questions is all about love and truth, yeah. about universal love and truth affecting the human soul. So, so while we can answer the question, it doesn't really it's probably going to come a long way down on the list. Yeah. And the same applies to um, 
questions about love, of course. God's love comes before human love and then yeah. and so forth. So, yeah. so if there's a questions about God's love that we feel needs to be answered, then we'll probably want to answer those first before we answer questions about human love, for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And so just in keeping with our theme, theme that you've already what touched in, or well, what we won't answer, <laughs> yeah. um, it, just like with when the question has demonstrates no opportunity for us to teach um, universal truth, the same applies for personal truth. Of course. If the person is who's asking the question is close to the truth and their question is posed in a way that is really saying, I don't want personal truth and I don't want to learn any personal truth about myself, then we're not going to answer the question. No, no. Because it's a really... We might put the question on a list for others if we feel it's an important question that others might be open to hearing. Yes. But but it's highly unlikely we'd send an email back to the person involved. Yeah. Uh, aside yeah. from just saying thank you for your question. Type yeah. Of yeah. Mm. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, um, questions that display a lack of humility, that indicate the impossibility for the questioner to conceive that they might even be wrong. And this comes under the category really of questions that are their statements or people wanting to make a point and doing yeah. it in the guise of a question. We get we get this a lot from religious people where we they do. just go, I don't see how you can do this and please tell me how this is and please tell me how that is. But really what they're saying is, I don't agree with anything you're saying and these are all the Bible reasons why or these yeah. are all the Cor Quran reasons why I don't believe what you're saying. So we, we'll, our feeling is, well, if you don't believe what you're saying, that's okay with us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're but not why, going to answer your questions. And it feels very draining to the, to sit down and and answer a question where you know the person really isn't. They've they've stated a question, but they really don't want to hear an answer from you. And no. and I have done it in the past, and really it just sort of infuriates a person more that I've actually answered the question that they did ask yeah. because really they were really wanting to make a point with yes. me. Yes, yeah. and, and a lot of people are quite uh, what I'd call as deceitful and manipulative mm -hmm. about that. They they really want to just make a whole heap of points yeah. rather than listening to answers yeah. that might confront the points th that they're making. And many times the points they're making are totally illogical. Yeah. In fact, I would classify many of them as both unscientific and imaginary yes. <laughs> in the sense that like a lot of people's belief in the Bible is imaginary. You know, yeah. a lot of things that a claim to have happened didn't happen. A lot of things um, that that they say should happen in the future will never happen. Yeah. And they're just and it's just some meanderings of somebody's mind written down. And many times, not only somebody, but a multitude of people have modified that particular information. And and why would we want to spend all this precious time we have sharing truth? confronting error all the time mm. let's present the truth and 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 if the error that you're reading in the bible doesn't agree with it then obviously we don't agree with it yeah <laughs> you know? yeah and it doesn't matter how much you quote 25 different verses to yeah. us we're not going to change our mind no so yeah. there's little point in answering questions like that now if we have a sincere christian come along and he says and he asks a question about what does this verse mean from mm -hmm. your perspective and we feel from that christian a sincere desire to know the answer or even to consider the possibility of our answer being correct, then of course we will probably answer the question in either the Christian religion section or the Bible section. And we have done that. We, have, we done have done that for many questions. Yeah. 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 So we're not adverse to answering questions. We're adverse to answering questions of people who don't want to hear the answers. Yes, that's <laughs> giving, right. <laughs> we're adverse to giving answers to people who don't want to receive them. <laughs> yes, and we're also we're also never going to answer the question of someone who is abusive, attacking, sarcastic, violent, ridiculing, condescending, condescending and, all um, and belittling towards ourselves or other people. Why would we? Yeah. We're not teaching them love if we no. do so. Yeah. What we need to do is teach people love, and a part of our teaching people love is that we act in a loving manner towards ourselves. Now, if someone's not acting in a loving manner towards us, why would we engage a conversation with them? And why would they even expect us to? <laughs> yeah. That's what I don't understand. Why, yeah. why, would, why would anybody email us and expect us to answer a whole heap of attacking abuse? Yes. There's no reason for us to answer it. Yeah. And engaging with them would only further exacerbate their and loving behavior. I remember once or twice when I have done it, there was one lady who, who's, who was a Catholic. She says, I'm a Catholic. She said, and you're, you're a poofta, she called me. And, uh, and I forget what else she said, something about me being some kind of manipulative cult leader. 
And I wrote back to her and saying, firstly, um, you might be a Catholic, but you're not very loving. Yeah. Secondly, <laughs> that you call me a poofter, and I'm definitely not one because yeah. I actually enjoy a heterosexual relationship <laughs> with my girl and never have been one. Yeah. Not that that being one is bad because the reality is um, if we Google, if we use the right term yes. and, the, and the more loving term of homosexual, yeah. um, one of my best friends, John, yeah. the Apostle John, is homosexual, so there's not a problem there. And then I said to her about, you know, the, the issue about me being a cult leader, well, why don't you watch the whole series of cult information that yeah. we've produced, 40, 50, I think 70 videos yeah, or more. Yeah, yeah. And, and anyway, you know, so I send that off to her. She writes back, I didn't want a reply from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so well, that was a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't reply to them. That's why. <laughs> and in fact, I feel that if I reply and answer a question to someone who's being really attacking or whatever, I'm, uh, like you said, I'm, I'm sort of through that action saying it's okay that you treat me or other people in that way. And so if I do respond to people like that, the only way I feel that I can ethically respond is by first addressing, addressing the, issues of love. the issues of love about the way they've posed their question or the, the underlying emotion in the question yeah. before I can even look at the question. Yeah. Because that's the major issue yes. from God's perspective yeah. um, is the issue of love right there. Yeah. And how many times have we addressed an issue with love, of love with a, someone who thinks they are loving yeah. and they've come back with a whole heap of abuse and swear words and carry on and, yeah. and in the end it's just a waste of our time. Like It, it doesn't accomplish yeah. anything no. and, and, and honestly those kind of people and, and I just want to say something to people who email us not expecting a response. Why email a person when you don't expect a response? Like it's stupidity, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. like, well, but a lot of people a lot of feel people entitled it. to just yeah. lay abuse on and then to... And then run away. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can't handle the answers. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is what we're talking about. If you can't handle the answers, why do you expect an answer? <laughs> or, or, or why engage? <laughs> or but, why engage yeah. at all? Yeah. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> and and people, don't, people nowadays don't seem to be able to leave other people alone. No. Do they? It's like... The whole live and let the, live. Yeah, yes. the whole live and let live thing. No, it's not. It's live and let die. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, let's see, how can we crush them? And I just yeah. feel like, you know, a, a lot of people who listen to our presentations and so forth, there are a lot of sincere people, but a lot of the people who listen just for the sake of picking on things, they're not interested in truth. They're not interested in love. They're not interested in anything at all other than picking on somebody. So go and pick on somebody else. <laughs> Well, no, I don't encourage picking on someone else. Well, I no, encourage you to reassess your priority list in life. What I'm saying is, they will pick yeah. on somebody sooner or later. We'll pick on yeah. somebody else. We're not going to. We're not going to engage it with you and go. Yeah. Oh yeah, no worries. Pick on us. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, how crazy is that? Yeah. And there's this deep expectation in people that because we're Jesus and Mary, that we should let people pick on us all the time. It's the whole turn the other cheek situation. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like we've even had that said to yeah. us by somebody who's picking on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> like, like, really, you're, you're going to sit there and say, you're not sorry for treating us badly and, and we've got to just sit here in, in our own home and keep putting up with it. No, yes. you get going, man. <laughs> like, like, we're not putting up with this from you. <laughs> and also uh, my feeling about what you said in the first century about turning the other cheek was really about humility. It's about being willing to feel my feelings rather than, rather than put them on to somebody else in retaliation. Them in return, yes. yes. And that's very different. And it was very different to the way in which it's used now. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's, so. it's about just being humble to your own feelings about attack. But it's certainly not saying, look, make yourself a doormat and encourage and invite people to stomp on you. Exactly. Yeah. That's why in the first century, if I was in, surrounded by people who weren't listening to me at all and were just attacking me, I didn't say anything at all. Yeah. Because there's no point. There's no point saying anything to a group of people who are not open to love, not open to truth. Nothing you can say is going to please them. Nothing you can say is going to make the situation better. They already have set in their heart what they're deciding to do. Yeah. And nothing you can do or say is going to make it better. So, so you know, we often get emails from people like that mm -hmm. and we don't respond to them. Yeah, we, we do exactly what I used to do. Just yeah. buy email instead of face to face. <laughs> that's that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So other other questions that we don't answer. Yeah. Uh, questions that are controlling and manipulative, and indicate that rather than having a sincere desire for truth, the questioner is attempting to manipulate or control the situation. 
We've yeah. pretty much spoken And also about attempting that. to make statements rather than yes. have a question. Like yes. a lot of people, I, I don't know what where people, like, what ha- like a, the feeling I have is so if I've got a question and it's sincere, I'll ask it. Yeah. If I haven't got a question and I want to make a statement, I'll make a statement. Yeah. Do that's, one or the other. That's stop, honest, yeah. Stop phrasing all of your statements as questions. Yeah. Like if you truly want to know the answer to a question, you will listen to the answer. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. And if you didn't want to truly know the answer to a question, you won't listen to the answer. Yeah. You should have made a statement under those circumstances yeah. instead of asking a question. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> another another reasonably common email that we get, and I was just speaking to Lena before the session started yeah. about some of the things she, because she's um, volunteering yeah, on our account office at account at the moment. <coughs> um, she was talking about... Um, these emails that we get fairly regularly, which are, look, I want to come and join your <laughs> cult, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. So they're ill-informed about our life and the way yeah, things what happen. what have they listened to? Nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, but then they say, and unless I hear from you, I'm getting on a plane tomorrow and I'll be arriving and I don't have any way to support myself. I'm willing to work for food, but basically trying to manipulate and control us into communicating with them and into supporting them financially. Yes. And so that doesn't really fly with us either. Well, for a start, it's out of harmony with love that they expect anybody to support them financially. Yeah. It's out of harmony with love that they expect to be able to manipulate a person into accepting their company. It's out of harmony with love to demand that other people support them in any way, like with food or other things. But even (laughs) to try to manipulate someone into responding to their email. Yeah, and if they have enough money to fly to Australia, they certainly have enough money to care for themselves. (laughs) (laughs) And by law, they have to have enough money to return, have pay a return flight, actually. And we, we don't have a... We we only live by ourselves. We don't have visitors who do that ever, ever. So we are never, ever (laughs) going to accept visitors. No matter what is going on, we're never going to accept visitors who say that to us. And we're even usually never going to reply to them. Yeah. 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 And what we generally find is they never come either. No. (laughs) Because all they want is the engagement. That's right. Not the... There's a lot of of ways and and there's... um, some emails that I printed that maybe we can talk sure, about later. But sure. A lot of ways that people try various techniques to yeah. to uh, elicit a response from it's us. It's pretty off, isn't it? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're fine. It's very people are so manipulative. manipulative. And they yeah. try they try the the sweet uh, sort of um, saccharine stuff. Saccharine <laughs> sucking up kind of your wonderful. Please give me attention. And then when the intention does, and we can yeah. feel that that's not sincere. That that's no. more about an addiction that they're wanting to get met. That's yeah. different to people who are genuinely yeah. uh, appreciative. And then when that doesn't work, invariably within a day or two, we get an angry email saying, look, now I don't believe that you're Jesus because you haven't responded to me and I'm going to start yeah. spreading the word that you're evil unless you respond to me. So spread the word then. <laughs> yeah. well, we don't care. <laughs> like, don't you think it's been yeah. done before you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then within a couple of days, we usually get another sort of tack. And, in, and, sometimes, and, then it lasts... we get, and sometimes it goes in a whole cycle. Oh, yes. I apologise for all yeah. the manipulation things I've sent you still trying to manipulate us <laughs> exactly <laughs> and the sad just... thing is that sometimes we don't see our emails for two days or three days or, or, four or a days, week or and more. the whole cycle has kind of happened before we even realize <laughs> <laughs> what was going on yes <laughs> yeah so. and isn't it funny how people even just expect a reply like well I think a lot of people spend so much time attached to to, to their computer. A computer or, or a mobile phone or some yeah. device these Which days. Which we don't. With, you know, half an hour check-ins. Or, <laughs> <laughs> and we sort of live very differently to that. Yeah. So, so I'm very grateful that we do yeah. uh, and we have that. Uh, we would never get anything done if we no, didn't. No. And yeah. that's the other thing is that a lot of people who email all of those kind of things must think we live very blinkered and, sh- you know, yeah. con- like... Attached to this kind of... Well, not only that, very sheltered and blinkered lives or something. Like, no, we get out and see people and visit people and we, we, we also create a lot of things. We're not, we're not interested in just sitting at our computer behind the anonymity of the internet, like replying to people with a whole heap of words that they don't understand. Yeah, because their their own emotional... Uh, condition State is preventing them, from, doing them doing so. from really feeling what we're trying to say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not, we don't interested in doing that. 
Yeah, okay, so other questions we don't answer. <coughs> mm -hmm. Questions that are selfish and self-absorbed, um, mm. vain or an attempt to demonstrate the questioner's own arrogance or self-importance. Yeah. Or to is that all one thing, is it? <laughs> it is, because uh, there's quite a few things on, we could mention, isn't there? I'll, I'll say it all and then we yeah, can talk about yeah, it. Sure. Uh, or to take up the time of others for no purpose other than to make the questioner feel important or get attention. Yeah, attention-seeking, definitely not on for us. Yeah. If you're attention-seeking, well, we're not going to give you the attention, so yeah. you should, probably you should try and get it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what were the other things? I could forget them um, already. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Selfish and self-absorbed. Now, that's yeah. one that we see... Quite frequently. And, and particularly with people who have a sickness or an illness or a disease or a life-threatening condition of some kind. Or a financial crisis. Or a financial crisis, yeah. 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 And, and often um, what I notice with those kind of questions, when that person is coming from... Um, this selfish kind of self-absorbed place is that they really want information. They don't want to understand those broader principles we spoke about earlier. Well, they're that not would interested in seeking truth. Deal with the causes and get out of this long-term. Well, a forever. lot of them haven't even bothered with any of the truth. No, they, they just just now. They just want go. Here's an opportunity for somebody to listen to me, or here's an opportunity for somebody to give me some money, or here's an opportunity for someone to tell me what's wrong with my life, or yeah. you know. And, and, and honestly, we're not. You're not sincere, people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you do that, you're not sincere. Yeah. Why would we answer you? We can't yeah. answer you yeah. if you're not sincere. Yeah. So these are not sincere requests. These are, these are just requests driven by addictive emotions that you're unwilling to address. And we've got a whole series of things that we've pr produced about addictive emotions. Go and have yeah. a look at that. Yes. <laughs> because honestly, until you get out of that state, there's a high likelihood we're not going to interact with you and, and we'd be surprised why anybody else would want to, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. If you think about a lot of the emails we get, you'd be surprised if anybody in the world would want to interact with some of those people yes. while yeah. they have that level of demand and addiction yeah. and control and manipulation yeah. and everything else going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the other way I see that happening is for people who who have perhaps been coming to seminars or listening to YouTube for a number of years. They've made very little personal change, though. They might be fascinated by God's truth external to themselves. They make no real personal change or no sincere attempts to challenge their addictions in their life. And then suddenly some, some attraction comes to a head and it's not sincerity that's motivating their question anymore. It's a sense of fear and desperation. And they just want a quick fix, basically. Yeah. And they want you or me to mm. tell them exactly what they need to do to get out of this crisis. Yes. But really, the, their will-based desire is, I still want to hold on to all my other addictions, though. Of course. I just want to deal with the <laughs> one that's causing... I wouldn't give up any addictions. <laughs> <laughs> just want to get rid of the one thing that's causing this just <clears throat> this very extreme situation. Yeah. And we're less attracted to those kind of questions, well, aren't we? Well, again, it's not sincere. There's not a sincere desire for God there. And there's not a sincere desire to love all the time. Yeah. There's not a, it's only when things get unloving for them yeah. that they're interested in change. That's very selfish. Yeah. And, and honestly... Yeah, they, they don't attract us at all. Yeah. Like, it's highly unlikely we'll answer them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they raise interesting points, which you might, you know, put into an FAQ session or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But rarely will those kind of people receive a personal response from us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions that come from people in spirit dimensions but which the people on earth that those spirits are using as the intermediary have no interest in having answered. So that's, <laughs> yes. for example, me as the medium. I'm not interested in... Well, a lot of times they're not mediums. Yes, that's they? true. A, that's lot of true. The, a lot of times yeah. they're, they're mediums in a technical sense of the word, yeah. but they're not actually mediums doing a job. What they are is people who are totally possessed yes. <laughs> by spirits, basically. Yes. Yes. And, and the spirit is just telling them what to say. So they write a whole heap of pages out. Usually it's all in the same line. No punctuation. No punctuation, no anything. No capitals. No yep. capitals or anything. Yep. It's yep. all yep. just like gunk. <laughs> They've had this splurge out from yep. a spirit and are demanding that we give them an answer, this or that, this or that. And we know that the person involved has no interest in the subject whatsoever. The person who actually did the typing yeah, is has, not really a party to the question. And they're just being totally spirit possessed yeah. to to interact with us in order to demand our time and waste it 
Yeah. And the reality is, yeah, have no. Yeah. There's a, there's a um, lot of reasons why we have no desire to respond. Yeah. Um, to that kind of a questioning. Yeah. And it's a similar principle, isn't it, that we talked about earlier about addressing the issue of love. And because sometimes this happens in you, seminars. And you sometimes can't even like, address the know, issue of love with them. Well, what I was going to say is the <laughs> issue that we need to address up front is, look, you're quiet spirit over cloaked. Yeah. You know, that's But, but they the don't even want to hear that. Yeah. So, like, what can you say to them? Yeah. Like, we, we look at a lot of these emails and we go, another person like this. Yeah. yeah. And particularly we find a lot of young men and young yes. women now yeah. getting into this condition where yeah. they are being overcloaked. They're giving up their will. Giving sort of, up their will. Yeah. And and we read the the whole thing and we go, now all it is is this spirit saying a whole heap of mumbo jumbo through you. Both you and the spirit have done no research. You have mm. no desire for truth. You have no desire for love. You you just want an interaction, which and is attention, a, an even, attention. Isn't it? Yeah. And and honestly, yeah, we haven't got the time to answer those particular questions because we've got a lot of important subject matter to to share, and not enough time to do it already. Yeah. 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 So. Well, let's look at the the, the kind of flip of side of that. Yeah. yeah. Which is questions that come from people on Earth. Yeah. But which the spirits with those people will not allow. The person, the person on, on earth, earth to, to hear, hear the answer to and yeah. we see that a lot oh that's like like we often get new age people in this in this yeah. mode where they send us a whole heap of questions and and we know that the spirit with them doesn't want to hear the answer to any of the questions and it reminds me of this lady like many years ago who emailed me about I that you know I couldn't be Jesus because she was channeling Jesus and, rah, 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 and she went through all this stuff. Anyway, I told her the spirits that she was actually channeling and she confirmed. They, she said, is that true to them? And they said, yes. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> They'd been lying about their identity. For basically. years to her. Yeah. Yeah. And and she asked her what, them why and they said, they said because, you know, because you let us <laughs> yeah. basically yeah. and you wanted to, yeah. we wanted to have an interaction with you and you'd only let us when if we claimed we were Jesus. So we did. Yeah. And she didn't have any idea though who they were or anything. But after a while, we had a dialogue that went on for a few months. But after a while, I could feel that, yeah, these spirits do not want her to change whatever she does. And she actually doesn't want to change whatever she does either. And all of a sudden, the just dialogue just stopped and we never heard from her again. And, and I think of all that material going back and forth would have been great in the public domain, but, yeah. but because a lot of people may have learnt some things mm. from it, but in the end, it didn't benefit her or the spirits with her. And so basically you're saying, though, is when a person is in codependent sort addiction. of addiction with a, a spirit or a group of spirits, yep. and the spirits are quite invested in the person in earth <coughs> not receiving truth yes. about a certain subject or a number of subjects, yes. then even if you offer the truth to that person, unless they want to give up the codependence with the spirits... It's never going to go anywhere. Never going to go anywhere. And you can, I, I experience that as well. You, you pretty rapidly feel when that person doesn't want to give up the spirit yeah. uh, relationship that they have. And yep. you know that it doesn't matter how hard or which way or, you know, how you try to present the truth of the personal situation for the person on earth, unless they want to give up that spirit interaction, it's just it's going to go nowhere and it's a waste of your energy. It is. And we've had a number of people coming to seminars asking questions who fall into that category, yes. haven't we, over many yes. years. Yeah. Yeah. And it is just, you just, what do you do? You can't, you can't continue feeding the addiction to just ask a whole heap of questions with no result. Yeah. And, and a lot of the questions are not even interesting to us because they mm. don't fit our priorities. Yeah. So they're not even like worth spending time on. There's more important things, I should say, that are worth spending our time on. But also yeah. I find with those kind of people too, the spirits with them only want them to have certain things answered mm -hmm. and then they get to a point where the spirit's challenged mm -hmm. and then they don't want to have the other things answered. Yeah. All right. So, And it gets down to, in fact, the person on earth and the spirit both have issues with being challenged. Mm. They want their belief systems to not be challenged, mm -hmm. and and they only want validation a lot of times. So they only they want you to agree with them, you know. Yeah. And we get a lot of emails where people say, "I agree with this." You know how you believe this, and we go, "No, we don't. We don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, what do you yeah. think? Why do you think we believe that for? Yeah. You know, you believe this and you believe that, and I agree with all that." And, and what do we say to these people? Where have they heard that we believe mm. those things when what we've taught is completely the opposite of what they're saying? Yeah. 
they obviously haven't heard it from us. Yeah. They're just presuming a whole heap of things. What can we do? Yeah. Again, spirit-motivated questions like yes. that that are just like trying to engage us in some way without there being any sincere interaction. Yeah. Little time for that. Yeah, and I was just smiling as you were speaking about that, about, you know, people who want... And I even recognise this in myself when I first met you. you. You know, when a person really asks a sincere question, they have an open heart to whatever the answer is going to be. And that, that it's a sincere open, what is the answer to this question? That's a pure question, isn't it? Um, but often we can ask questions because we want validation for a point of view that we're already holding. And we think that the person who's going to answer the question is going to agree with us and we're going to get a little buzz from that, that we knew the answer to the question. Yeah. And very often um, that or, gets... Or you get the, the other thing where we have had frequently in seminars where the person asks the same question every seminar. And want a different answer. And they want a diff all they want is a different answer. Which is, they want the answer that they already think the answer is. So why don't they just say what they think the answer yes. is and get on, get on with it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just say, no, I'm sorry, I disagree. Yeah. And let's finish it yeah. there. Yeah. Instead of just asking the same question yeah. again and again yeah. and again and again and again, hoping for me to say something different to them. Yeah. Why do they even want me to say something different <laughs> to them? I don't understand that either. If I disagreed with you, I wouldn't want you to keep, I wouldn't keep saying, are you you it? <laughs> Uh, do you really want that? Do, you know, I wouldn't yeah. keep asking you the same question. I'm like, okay, fair enough. You disagree with me, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <okay. laughs> yeah. I guess there are a lot of emo emotional injuries that cause us to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Huge amounts of emotional injuries of wanting other people to agree with you, wanting approval from other people before you will accept a belief, yeah. wanting wanting you holding steadfastly to a belief that you believe is true without verbalising that you believe it's true, not when you, when you're willing to look stupid to other people yeah. all sorts of reasons yeah. why a so person many. does that but yeah. it's all addiction it is <laughs> which is why so, we're attracted to answer it yeah so we're not attracted to answering questions of people who are really just seeking validation from point of, for a point of view that they already hold yeah or or who want us to supply an answer that's going to make them feel comfortable rather than to supply a truthful answer exactly also we're not very attracted to answer answering questions for people um you know, say, I, say a person asks a question, you give them an answer, and then without even taking pause to, to really listen and process the answer to that question, they're on to the next, yeah. d the answer rather, they're on to the next question. Yeah. And to me that... So that's a total lack of respect for the, any time we spent answering the previous question. And they didn't really listen to the first answer, so why would we why answer would the we second, give a second question? One? Yeah. No point. Yeah. 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 And we nowadays generally say that to them. <laughs> <laughs> No That's point in right. the second one. You haven't thought about the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the you can't really you can't receive more truth from God unless you're willing to look at what God's yeah. attractions and God's messengers and God's all you know whatever God's trying to teach us right now. We can't learn the next thing because God no. knows the exact best thing for us to learn right now. And yeah. so it's a similar principle. Like if, we, if you're drawn to ask a question and then you reject that answer and want to ask a different question, you're kind of rejecting the whole process of learning, aren't you? Not only that, you're really rejecting the time and effort yeah. of the individual giving you the answers as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a gross lack of respect, actually, yeah. for yeah. the time of the person who's giving you their time for free. Yeah. Like... And yeah, honestly, when people demonstrate that kind of level of disrespect, there's little point in engaging them further. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next lot is uh, people, and we've sort of touched on this. People from, sorry, questions from people who only want their addictions met, who are demanding, unkind, have expectations, hmm. and the question indicates that they really want to just keep meeting their addictions. Yeah. And we've had many of that. I think I've put even a few interactions of those on the internet in a chain of events to, so people can see the chain of events. Usually it starts off with their, you know, asking some sincere questions and then it gets into demanding that we answer them in the time frame they've given us to answer them. Yeah. As soon as they get into that place, it's like, what? 
Yeah. Like, like we're giving you our time for free and now you're demanding time from us what, yeah. what's wrong with you <laughs> and and usually we say that's an unloving thing and of course when we say that's an unloving thing the, any person who's in a demand usually gets really angry then yeah. you know, so then yeah. they start you know getting vicious and then we go now, now not only are you unloving but you're also vicious like yeah. so now you've got two problems like. yeah uh, and and why would we want to have any interaction with you after that, you know? Yeah. And then I think one lady even tried to take down my responses from the internet. She, she actually went through a whole series of processes to remove my responses, <laughs> which I had to remove, oh Lord. So it's just like, yeah, that's a high level of control and terrible, terrible behaviour. Yeah. And honestly, people like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad to see the back end of your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've learnt, haven't we, over the years yeah. that it's just, it doesn't help us, it doesn't help anyone else, it doesn't no. help that person. It just, it's just no. a huge waste of time. It's a waste time. of time. Yeah. And these kind of people are not sincere. A sincere truth seeker listens to responses they're given yeah. and they don't demand more time from a person who's giving them their time for free. Yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if they were paying for our time. Yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if we were, you know, charging $5,000 a week for a seminar or something, which we're not doing. No. You know, then you might feel justified in demanding a person's time from them. But boy, it's like, how, how unjust is it to demand the time of a person who's already gifted you their time? Yeah. And gifted you everything you've already heard yeah. from them. Yeah. That's very unloving behaviour. And, to be honest, we find that there's a lot of people out there who have unloving behaviour towards their teachers, Yeah, I've, which is I've, a very interesting yeah, problem, really. Because yeah. the teacher, whoever they are, whether at school or university or whatever, they're, they're, they're giving, giving you of themselves. They're yeah. sharing information with you that are, that's going to hopefully and, and probably assist your life. How can you demand things of them, even if you're paying them even? Mm. Like... And why do you think you know better than them before you start? Mm -hmm. <laughs> many people think that. Yeah. Like many people who have listened to us for four or five years now think they know better what divine teachings are, truth teachings are than we do who began them. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> like, that's right. Yeah. Or you could say repeated them from God anyway. Yeah. But you yes. know, either way, why would you think you know something better yeah. than the person who's taught it to you for years and years and years? Yeah. It's just arrogance. Yeah. And we're not yeah. that attracted to people who are arrogant. No. 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 Okay. Um, this is a good one. Yep. Questions that are not the real question that people need to ask, but yeah. rather are questions that people are asking to maintain their own facade. Yes. It, my, a lot of people have this concept that if I make out I'm a good person, it, then everyone around me, including me, will also believe that I'm a good person. <laughs> now, to be honest with you, if a person can feel your true emotional condition they are not going to believe you're a good person when you're not being one <laughs> yeah so and the reality is we can feel and particularly myself can feel accurately the emotional condition of most people so so you know the re reality is if you're acting like you're good when you're not very nice i'm still going to treat you like you're not very nice yeah yeah and initially that will be trying to help you through your facade and if you get angry with me, then of course there won't be any further interactions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's how you're going to get treated, whether, whether you're trying to make out you're someone nice or not. Yeah. yeah you're I going was... to be treated consistently based on the emotion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I was grinning about that because I, I, you know, I've done that a lot, especially when we first met, you know, asked questions in facade and wanted to maintain a big facade. That and was... we'd go into a great big palaver about asking questions and I'd say to, Honestly, darling, this is not what. what it's not what, what I'm are feeling. you feeling? Yes. And yeah. you'd say, "Oh, yeah, what I'm feeling is <laughs> really I'm angry, or I feel everything's hopeless." So yeah. Go and feel that. Yeah. Stop asking me about trying to get some hope. Go and feel the hopelessness you feel. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'd ask questions about, and that really their motivations were trying to feel more hopeful. Yeah. Or trying to get um, well, trying agreement. Well, to avoid the feeling of hopelessness, really. Well, it was one of the two. Avoid no, the but feeling. No, you only of... want to feel more hopeful because you're avoiding the feeling of hopelessness. That's what I mean. To mm. avoid the feeling of hopelessness or 
to get validation for my sense of cynicism. Yeah. You know, <laughs> both things yeah. were avoidance of emotion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also sometimes I see, and I see this in other people now because I know, because yeah. I've done it, yeah. um, to justify anger with other people, yes. to, to get validation for my righteousness. And, yes. and all of these kind of questions are facade-based questions yeah. and they do not help anyone, anyone. to answer them no. because they're really just helping the person, the questioner, which used to be me, yeah. to foster and maintain their own facade to themselves and to, and other, to other people. people. Yeah. And the best service we can do is, in that case is to help the person break through the facade. Of course, and tell them that the only reason why they asked that question was because they have a whole heap of other things going on. Yeah. That yeah. that's and the question is really almost moot. It's it's, it's almost done. You know. It's just a fabrication of the facade, isn't it? Really? It's a fabrication of a facade in an attempt to avoid the real question. Yeah. In many cases. Yeah. And yeah, we're getting more and more, the more sensitive we're getting emotionally, the less inclined we are to answer those kind of questions. Yeah. Before we would have taken them at face value. Definitely. Nowadays we don't take them at face value because we can feel the emotion behind them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've touched on this one in other areas of this series, mm -hmm. but questions that only benefit one person and will be of little benefit to others. Yes. No, it might be a good question, yeah. but if, it, if it's very uh, much surrounding your own personal life and your own personal circumstance and your own personal situation with no real relative relationship to anything else, yeah. it's, you know, like while it might be interesting to mm. converse with you, we have high priorities. And yeah. those higher priorities demand our attention more than your question demands our attention. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, you know, something that we've started doing since the assistance groups last year is recorded personal truth sessions with people. Mm -hmm. And that is answering sometimes quite personal specific questions, mm -hmm. but always you're very conscious of the bigger um, picture giving the bigger picture yep. and the reason that it's recorded and i know a lot of people feel mm. a lot of benefit from watching those sessions because there mm. are so many things that do apply to other people well, we just had a session today about uh, with uh, with andrew with the yep. guy who has cancer of the lungs yep. and that session has the potential to benefit many so many, many people, people with cancer yeah but and even those who who don't yet have cancer or who have specific issues with spirits or mm. uh, angry women or their mothers there's so much in that session that yeah. i was sitting there reflecting on for mm. myself even and, yes. and everyone who was watching yes. yeah so you know we often will engage those kind of people particularly when they're willing like andrew was to to have the recording done yeah uh, because it helps other people if if it was just andrew coming to us when and he didn't want to you know have the question in front of a camera and he didn't want to hear the answers in front of a camera then then all it does is benefit andrew alone yeah and under those circumstances maybe a few spirits with him perhaps but um under those circumstances we're less inclined to engage because we want to have the information benefit everybody and we'd rather say it once and benefit everybody than say it five times with five different individuals. Yes. Yeah. And as I mentioned in our session yesterday, even the benefit to Andrew would be limited to the, if it wasn't recorded in any way, it yeah. would be limited to the point where he became overwhelmed and didn't want to feel that. Then or he, where he became resistive and didn't want to do didn't anything want about to it. to deal with that. Mm. Whereas if it's recorded, it can help him Again and, and again, again and again. Yeah. Um, and so. And it can even help him if he passes. Yes. Like it can, and it can help a large number of other people, yeah. whether they're here or pass as well. Yeah. It can help a whole heap of spirits who still feel they have cancer while they're in the spirit world. It can help large so amounts of people, people when we do that. Yeah. So we're very focused on helping a larger group of people rather than the individual. Yeah. And we feel that if we do that, there's, there's not a single individual issue that doesn't help large groups of people generally. Yes. So, so we we, feel yes. if we do that, it's a great use of our time. Yeah. Mm. So that's why if it is a specific <coughs> question for, relating to a specific person, we try and record it so that other people and have it's similar by, issues. But if we go even further and it's by email, we probably won't answer it. No. Because, we, because it only benefits them and, and nobody else benefits from that's it. That's right. We might put it on an FAQ session and answer it because yep. then it might benefit a few yep. other people. Yeah. 
That's worth and um, for emails where I've done that in the past to help just a specific person, I've now began, begun to put them on our website or on my blog or something to, that it now benefits a b broader range of people. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if we don't do that, then basically it has been unless we, it's an interaction we really would like to have with the person because we're, you know, because of, uh, you know, we want to have a relationship with them, mm -hmm. there's really of no benefit to having the interaction yeah. Uh, yeah. to us personally yeah. or to the people who, who themselves, because most of the time the people themselves don't hear a lot of what yeah. we say. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like even encouraging people to record what we say because... What we've found in the past is that is that many people who come and ask a question and they don't record or write down anything we've said, they go away thinking we've said something entirely different to what mm -hmm. we've actually said. Mm -hmm. We've had people actually forget the entire two-hour conversation we had with them and they've never written anything and they haven't had it recorded. Yeah. And yet we've wasted two hours of our life yeah. and we say, remember that conversation? And they say, what conversation? And we go, oh, yeah, that's right. You were overcoat by a spirit the whole time, <laughs> weren't you? You weren't hearing a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and what's yeah. the point of having yes. that kind of a, a conversation with a person? Yeah. So we, and we find that there are a lot of people who fall in that category where they come to us asking a question, what they believe is, sin is sincere. Mm -hmm. They get some of our time and they don't listen to a single thing we've said. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and we go, well, that was pointless. Yeah. Like on, at least if we recorded it, and they didn't listen to everything anyway, he said. Other at least other people who might listen to it might listen to it yes. <laughs> you know, and yeah. actually yeah. do something about what's being said. At least that comes from, as a result. But when it's just no recording at all, there's no result whatsoever. We yeah. spend hours of our time, no result. Yeah. Like, we're not into that. No. We're into, like, we'd rather spend some time by ourselves than have to get some results. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and now that I've stopped asking questions in my facade, that's much more yeah, yeah, even <laughs> enjoyable. That's a lot more yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's just get through these sure, last ones sure. again. We've covered a lot of this, but yeah. questions that are rhetorical and generally just use the rhetoric of people who wish to lecture us, correct us, yes. um, use third-party material to attack us, or including just to, Bible and Koran and those uh, kind of things, and sacred holy books. Yep. Um, or they just want to take up our, our time. Yeah. Yeah. Seems so to be a popular pastime. People who are bored want to take up other people's time for some reason. They do. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. that one. And it's not a good use of our time to engage no, with those people. No, none of those things. And particularly the people who just send us a whole heap of rhetoric, you know, like, yeah. why do they think anybody's going to read it even? I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. There's, there's no emotional engagement. There's no emotional care. For us, yeah. all the, you know, any person who's listening, it's like it's like someone preaching at you. You yeah. know, if I wanted to have somebody preaching at me, I'd go along to a church or something where somebody yells and screams at me for an hour yeah. about the Bible and this and all that. You know, I, I, you know, I've never done that, but if I wanted to have somebody preaching at me, that's probably what I'd do. Yeah, I don't need it in my inbox. No. <laughs> So, or at your seminar. So, so when we start seeing the first few lines of those things, they just get deleted. Deleted, yeah. Yep. Delete button for those. Yep. And that same thing goes for people who, you know, we get people who write to us and demand answers to their questions because... Yeah, they get deleted. That, you know, <laughs> and this is what this faith says about it and what are you going to say about what I'm saying to and you? And I'm giving and you... Some of them even do things like, I'm giving you 24 hours to respond. Literally, yes. they say that. I'm giving you 24 hours to respond. I Otherwise, expect. I'm going to post yep. that you never responded and you don't care about yep. people and you... Yep. And all this crap, like, honestly, yeah. it's like... We're not sitting down in front of the computer 24 by 7 hoping that you email us <laughs> so, so we that we can respond and, write a response and to your mitigate yeah. all of your unreasonable and unloving demands and, yeah. and, and excessive, what I feel is it, it excessive and very negative uh, unloving behaviour. You know, like. Yes, and a lot of the time what happens with these kind of emails that come to office is that you know the volunteers there do have the library of our, of the videos that we've and many times the questions that these people have asked are answered in short clips so it takes 10 Five or 15 minutes, minutes of their even. time to watch yeah but often when the person is coming from that emotional space that we just spoke about the people answering will send look the your questions they, are answered in they these take the following time videos. to get all the links and put them all there for them and everything yep and the person responds angrily and says, I wanted a written response from Jesus to my question. Yeah. 
and, and, I, and I look at that and, and I go, you are never getting a written <laughs> response from me because of how you treated my lovely volunteer. Yeah, because they took the time to give you a very specific answer. You took the time firstly to record something that answered their question very clearly and in depth. So if they had a sincere desire, they would watch the video, but they didn't want to watch the video because they wanted special attention from you and they disrespected the time not of only the that people. a lot of times these people just want to have an opportunity for to enter an engagement where they finish up abusing me yeah, anyway that's that's, that's really true. what they want yeah and yeah. so what we do uh -huh. is test out most people's we, we test a lot of people's sincerity by giving them responses that are, are true where we've spent time to deliver but but they're general in nature yeah. so that they have to look at that for themselves yeah and if they respond badly to that, then they're not going to get a further response. Yeah. And if you if you um, contrast that with the sincere person, yeah, completely sincere different. people are. Uh, it is just a completely different feeling, and they oh, feel so, so much great. gratitude that someone has taken the time it's, to it's answer. Not that. They're it, seeking the answers. Even if they don't express already... their gratitude, you can feel from them that they do have a sincere desire for truth. They do have a sincere desire to grow in love. They are being humble in that yeah. they realise that they might not know the answer, yeah. even when they think they do. Yeah. And and when you send the response to them, they are appreciative, if not of anything else, at least of the time you've given them. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. And 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 they might not even agree with the answer. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But they're appreciative of the time that you spent responding. Yeah. Most of the people we've been talking about don't, don't fall into that category. Don't fall into that category. Yeah. Okay, um, questions, we don't answer questions that are not specific or are anonymous. Yes. Self-explanatory. I think so. I think the specific thing is we have a, whole, a person that says, they write a whole heap of stuff about their life and then say, I don't really know what question is that I want to ask. Yeah. And we go, well, if you don't know the question you want to ask, while I might know it, me answering it is not probably going to help you. <laughs> yeah. You need to know yeah. what you want to ask first. <laughs> so I like to encourage people because often within their whole um, splurb, splurb or life, life story, story <laughs> often there's a lot there's a lot that they're not even aware of. of. Course. They haven't paused long enough with their own emotions to feel, look, what is really yeah. troubling me? What is yeah. really what I want questions to? And sometimes even the answer to their questions in the next paragraph even, but they haven't just sat with the process long enough no. to feel through it. Yeah. And so I like to encourage people to do that, but also because of the volunteers. If volunteers have to sit down, read through all of this, they have to do the thinking, what is this really troubling this person? What do they really want to ask? How can I phrase can I that then for a frequently asked question or who do I refer it to? And that takes a lot of their time where, I, you know, I like to encourage people to take that time. It's more responsible and loving for the person who's asking the question yes. to actually sit with it and yeah. formulate a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, uh, like I feel there's something I want to talk, to talk about, something come out there I want to talk to you about later. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel that um, a lot of people, I don't know, have this sort of, they, they splurge out their life and a life story without actually reading what they just splurted out. Yes. And if they reread it over and over again, they'd learn a lot, but they don't. They don't take mm. the time even to go over the, what they're sending to us. Mm. And and like if if it was me doing that, I, I would I would reread it over and reread it over, and, and I'd ask myself, is this what I'm really feeling before I hit the send mm. button? Mm. I don't know. It seems with emails, with, with writing a letter. You have to really think about what you're going to say mm -hmm. because it hurts eventually your hand <laughs> yeah. to write the letter, you know, a large yeah. letter. But also that you've got time because you're writing usually slower. Yeah. You've got time to reflect upon what you're actually writing and what are you meaning and how do you feel. When the emails are written, we often see people don't do that. Yeah. It's just like blah, 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 send. and send. And, and there's no thought gone in or emotional connection with what they're sending to us many times. Mm. And then they wonder why we don't respond. It's because there is no emotional connection. There's the, the, it's just splurge, send, splurge, send. It's not, how do I really feel? 
what am I really wanting? What do I really need here? What help, kind of help do I need because of what are the issues that I feel I'm facing? Yes. There's no consideration gone into that. And yeah, that's what I was feeling about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I feel that's what that's what needs to change if people want to have a response from us anyway. <laughs> that's what needs to change. If they don't want a response, well, that's fine. Our inbox gets littered with people who are sending in life stories, but we don't respond to because they literally haven't given much thought to what they're writing even, yeah. or what they want to know. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, the last few. Um, Arguments that are couched as a question. Yeah, we well, I think that we tell you, and and honestly, we, they, they just they're frustrating to deal with, aren't they? It's, like, it's just they're asking a question, and we go, but you don't think that. <laughs> you don't think that. <laughs> Do you feel this? It's pretty obvious what you feel. Why are you, why are you just saying, I feel you're a monger, I feel yeah. you this, I feel you that. You know, quite often that's what it's about. I feel you're a monger, I feel you rip off merchant, I feel you this, yeah, I feel yeah, you yeah. that, I feel you this. Well, fair enough, and then delete. Yeah. Um, you can have all your feelings, that's fine by us. I'm not going to respond to those statements in a question yeah. because I can feel that it, I can feel your feelings. So I can feel that all you're doing is trying to make statements to me, questions to me yeah. that I respond to, trying to get some agreement to you. Like as if I'm going to agree that I'm a cult leader. I'm not a cult leader. Yeah. I only will agree to things that are true. Yeah. So you call me narcissistic 2,500 times. I'm not narcissistic, and I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can call me self-absorbed all you want. I'm not self-absorbed. My whole life spent not you know, is spent helping other people. Yeah, I'm not yeah, self-absorbed, yeah. and I've done it for thousands of years, many much longer than many have. Yeah. And and so I'm not self-absorbed. You call me self-absorbed. You can believe all you want. I'm not going to respond to it, and I'm not going to respond to it into a question that goes, Do, "Don't you think you're self-absorbed?" Yes. Of course, I don't think I'm self-absorbed. And. Um, and I know I'm not, yeah. so I'm not going to respond to the question. <laughs> okay, a disagreement that is couched as a question. We'd much prefer just to, for people to say they disagree. Yeah, just disagree. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, we'd much rather that. Yeah, and presentation of lies couched as questions. Yeah, we'd much rather the lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple. We we find that a lot when people ask questions about relationships. It's really a minefield. There, people set you up so much there because they want the answer that they're right and their partner's wrong yeah and they don't they don't give both sides of the story we can feel both sides of the story and it's not being given and and we just go honestly if you think we're going to respond to you when you're just telling your one-sided story to us like aside from saying to you you're telling us a one-sided story which mostly is based upon lies you want to tell yourself or deceive yourself about so that you can take actions you want and you want our agreement to take those actions we're never going to give it to you mm -hmm. we, we get so many people emailing us wanting agreement for leaving their partner or whatever and why would we agree with you doing that mm. and bearing in mind that we haven't even heard the whole story or we that, don't know these people and also don't you know aside from feeling, feeling them, we don't know we, the yeah. person we've never met them before and, and we're not hearing the story of their partner like why would we recommend leaving not leaving whatever yeah all we can do is give generalities which we've already given in our partner relationship series of FAQs yeah. that's all we can do yeah um, we can't help them specifically because they're lying to us yeah. <laughs> and lying to themselves most of the time. Absolutely. And looking for an excuse to just run away from yeah. a problem that they could easily resolve in many cases. Yeah, and I, that saddens me sometimes where um, even a couple might have had a filmed personal truth session with you where feedback is given and then that feedback is selectively used in an abusive way, really. Yes, terrible. It used I, to I be dislike abusive. That. It's uh, like one party starts attacking the other party because AJ said this to you. They start using us as an authority to abuse the other person. Now, I don't use any time, any, there's no excuse for abusing another person. And it's never endorsed by you. No. And the use of truth is never used by you in a way to humiliate, attack or abuse another person. No. And, and it's never given. It's very disturbing. It's very disturbing. I find it very disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it. And it also causes us to not trust that person. Well, it causes us to say, well, we're not going to answer any more questions. Because from that person, yeah. it's from you, because it's clear you're just going to use them to... To abuse your partner. To abuse someone else. Yeah, and, very sad. Yeah. Happens yeah. frequently. Yeah. yeah. And blame, there's a, like a huge... Whenever someone uses 
the personal truth that... Yeah, I've had death threats from male partners of female attendees at seminars because that female attendee has gone home and implied that I said something about the male partner that I've never said yeah. and implied to that male partner that, you know, that the, he's the problem. Yeah. And the reason why he's the problem is because AJ said this and AJ said that, none of which I agree with. Yeah. And then the male partner sends me death threats. Yeah. Like, and it's all caused by that woman. Yes. Sending, you know, manipulative, Using, being, manipulative. being manipulative. Yeah. 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 Which is obviously her primary problem in the relationship and probably the reason why the relationship isn't doing that yes. well in the first place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good discussion of the, que the types of questions yeah. that we don't answer. Yeah. yeah. So in amongst that, obviously, you know, you can see, you can see a general pattern emerging. This is general pattern is if we feel think people are sincere, they have a sincere desire to know truth, that doesn't, they don't have to agree with us. They don't have to, you know, but they do have to have a desire for love and truth. They do have to have a desire to be humble. They do have to treat us well mm -hmm. and they do have to treat other people well before we're going to respond to them. So, so you know, it, it's just basic courtesy. Most yes. of what we're saying yes. is really just basic courtesy. Of course, we are a lot more sensitive emotionally than the average people. So therefore, we can tell emotionally when someone's being discourteous, when they've got a smile on their face, mm -hmm. and the, but there's a whole heap of emotion coming from them that is opposite the smile on their face. And we will address that. But other than that, we're basically asking for basic courtesy in all interactions with every person, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we that's how we live our life. And that's how what we teach and it's also what we expect anybody who emails anything into us to be yeah <laughs> yeah yeah mm. yeah very simple great